person who is the 12th president of the University of Kentucky, hard to believe, just four years and 29 days ago, he started the job as the 12th president. That was July 1st, 2011. The accomplishments far too long to list here, but please give a warm welcome to University of Kentucky President Dr. Eli Capilouto. Thank you, Carl. I don't know if it's a good sign that people are counting the days that you've been around, uh, but it is a delight to be here. And I'm, I'm proud to welcome everyone, and especially our young people with bicycles. And since my wife and I have two dogs and been dog lovers forever, I want to welcome the dogs that came today. It, it's a big day for everybody. Uh, so, the, oh, thank you. It's all right, but you don't go before me, okay? I, I know that rule. Uh, so you know we're undergoing a dynamic transformation of our campus. Residence hall, dining spaces, academic and research buildings, athletic facilities, our natural landscape, and the pathways that connect campus. A few months ago, we announced the alumni drive realignment. I understand it's on time a project focused on improving transportation flow and providing safer routes on and through and around campus for all, all kinds of traffic. We also recently announced a new program so more employees and students can utilize our public transit system. With these initiatives, which also built on the bike incentive programs that we launched during the last academic year, which was oversubscribed by the way, we are taking a holistic approach to parking and transportation on our campus. We've made good prog progress, but all of us acknowledge that there's more work to do. Today, we take another step toward improving the safety and accessibility of our campus. The Arboretum Shared Use Path will help connect surrounding neighborhoods to our campus. And because of these improved campus pathways, it also will help you to get through here to downtown. Originally, this connection was envisioned in the 1965 Transportation Master Plan. So the new path provides safer access for bicycles to enter our campus. <clears throat> and by utilizing this shared use path, cyclists can avoid the busy, sometimes dangerous intersections, and it won't increase existing congestion on our pedestrian pathways. So as I get to say almost weekly at the University of Kentucky, success has lots of mothers and fathers, and I want to thank a few people. Mayor Gray and our city partners for providing important signage, Councilwoman Lamb and the neighborhoods in the 4th District, and south of the Arboretum, and Lance Brooking and his team in parking and transportation. I'll tell you what, taking parking complaints on a university campus, that is not a fun job, but <laughs> thank you, Lance. Uh, without the support and partnership of all our key collaborators, uh, today just wouldn't have been possible. So congratulations. We forged a new connection so that our people can safely enjoy the beauty of campus and indeed our entire community. So thank all of you. Well, this is a, the president and I both get to attend a few of these press conferences occasionally, but rarely do we get such a congregation. In fact, this one is so, so significant. Ken Trotsky, hold up your hand, professor. He said that it got in the way of his commute to the campus this morning. Uh, <clears throat> President Capilouto, thank you. Council Member Susan Lamb, it is great to be here today in the 4th District. It's a beautiful day, as Carl has already said, as the President has said, it's a beautiful day to be at the Arboretum, to take a walk or ride a bicycle, and Lexington is earning a reputation as a bike-friendly community. We've been awarded bronze level status recently from the League of American Bicyclists. Every day, more and more people are choosing to put on a helmet and hop on a bike as a way to get around for leisure, for exercise, or for getting to and from work and school. And it's attracting tourists as well. But I've always believed, as many of you know, 
that if you build it for your own people first, then others will come. Quality of life, quality of place, creative place making are all keys to our economy. Nowhere has that been better illustrated than right here on the campus. 20, 30, 40 years ago, people moved to where the jobs were. We can think IBM in Lexington. But today, there's a premium on quality of life. And jobs, companies, Mr. President, even researchers are moving, as you know, to where the people, to where the talented people are, where they have decided to live and to work and to stay. So as a city, it's important for us to meet the needs of cyclists and pedestrians by working with partners and citizens. A few years ago, the city partnered with the Kentucky Mountain Bike Association to open a four-mile mountain bike trail in Veterans Park. And by working with private citizens, the cost of that project ended up being just a fraction of the original estimate. And the partnership today for the Town Branch Trail. Those who make up the nonprofit Town Branch Trail Incorporated have been an important part of fundraising and land acquisition. And in another part of town, citizens from the West Sixth Running Club and Broke Spoke Bike Shop are raising money to install a water fountain and bottle filling station on the Legacy Trail. So today we are celebrating a new trail that will make it easier for folks to get to campus and to downtown, made possible by the University of Kentucky and by Baptist Health. All great examples of folks working together to improve quality of life in Lexington. Yes, this new Arboretum path adds to our growing network of paths and trails for cycling and walking. From the Legacy Trail to Town Branch Trail to Brighton Rail Trail and all points in between, Lexington is connecting the pieces to make it easier to bike or walk around town. The city is adding more bike lanes, 32 miles and counting, colored lane markings and road signage to improve the safety of bike lane. So thank you and congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, President Capilouto and Mayor Gray and Mr. Nathy. Um, we're here today to celebrate a joyous moment and hi to all my 4th District constituents out there because this is a great showing for a wonderful, wonderful day. So, uh, although this new path may not directly go through my district, the 4th District is uniquely situated where we are a neighbor to the University of Kentucky campus and the Arboretum going all the way down to the southern Fayette County. It is exciting to learn that the Belafonte bike route, the oldest bike route in Lexington, does run through my district and now connects to the new shared use path. The city has long supported car-free commuters and these routes and paths are ways in which we express that support. The new shared use path will allow residents, not only the 4th District, but from this whole area of to connect to the campus and downtown safely and efficiently. It will also welcome commuters across Lexington to connect via our district. I want to especially thank our neighborhood associations for working closely with UK and the city on this project. Together we can do so much to make our community safer, healthier, and more efficient. And I look forward to continue working together with UK and other partners to make Lexington a greater city. Thank you. Well, it's always good to be at uh, environments like this where I get applause because it's not always the case. Um, I'd like to start by um, first thanking President Capilouto, Mayor Gray, Councilwoman Lamb, and um, all of you for attending today. It certainly is an honor and a privilege to be here today to celebrate the opening of the Arboretum Shared Use Path. The, this ceremony is a culmination of over three years of dialogue, planning, and collaboration among a number of groups, many of whom are represented here today. I want to take just a few minutes uh, to specifically acknowledge several key groups whose cooperation and leadership have made this day possible. I'd first like to offer special thanks to the Arboretum leadership team and our campus neighbors for their cooperation and feedback throughout this process. Secondly, I'd like to thank Baptist Health for their partnership in helping to improve a connectivity to the West with a connection from University Court to Hiltonia by way of the Baptist Health Campus. Um, it's actually located as you travel along the path, um, just adjacent to Shawneetown at the end of the north end of the path. 
Finally, I want to take uh, an opportunity to thank the Bicycle Advisory Committee for their vision and leadership. Since their formation in 2011, the BAC has been responsible for steering many of the accomplishments that propelled the university's bicycle-friendly status from honorable mention in 2012 to silver level last fall, as recognized by the League of American Bicyclists. Shortly after their inception, the committee identified this connection as a priority project. Now that the path has transitioned from concept to reality, we continue to demonstrate our commitment to providing a more bicycle-friendly campus for our students, faculty, staff, and visitors. Parking and Transportation Services is tasked with enhancing campus mobility and ensuring the university remains accessible to the broad campus community. Managing automobiles and automobile parking will always be an important component of the mission. However, we are increasingly looking to other forms of transportation to expand our commuting alternatives, foster environmental sustainability, and ultimately reduce dependency on single occupancy motor vehicles. Today's opening is extremely important as it provides a critical link between the neighborhoods to our south and those to our north. While this path has far-reaching community benefits, it is also a significant step forward in making bicycle commuting a truly viable, safe, and enjoyable option for an expanded segment of the university community. I am proud to be part of an organization and community that is committed to exploring, funding, and implementing programs and infrastructure such as this gorgeous path where a single occupancy vehicle is not the only transportation option and where there, those that are capable and willing are able to seek alternatives and thrive. Thanks again for joining us today.